Uh, our next witness is the Reverend Sharon Ferguson, who's uh, chief executive of the lesbian and gay Christian movement, and um, a Christian who doesn't believe in the Bible and 2,000 years of Christian tradition. A Christian who doesn't believe in the Bible? I wouldn't say that. <laughs> uh, well, you don't believe in the Bible's uh, strictures, where, wherever they're to be found, uh, about homosexuality? I believe in, in that the Bible is the inspired word of God, but I also believe, as Christ said, that the Holy Spirit was being sent to us to continue our teaching and that we need to actually continue discerning what our God wants us to, to live through that witness of the of the Holy Spirit, which is why we're now at a point where we don't endorse slavery, where we did for so many years. And I think this is the same when we look at all of those and why we don't stone people anymore like we used to. Would it be better, do you think, if the Bishop, uh, the bishop of Rochester were prosecuted as a criminal for repeating traditional Christian beliefs? Uh, no, I don't think he should be prosecuted as a, as a criminal at all. I think he's, he's perfectly, um, it's perfectly acceptable for him to have any, any view that he wishes and to, to believe what he wants to to believe and uh, i think you know we we all interpret the uh, the the gospels we we all interpret whatever um, holy holy book that uh, that we follow um in in our own way because we are all on a journey and we we are all grasping to to understand uh, the the will of god in that what i don't think he should do however is is actually use it to discriminate clever well um can i just ask you just whether you think your objection to Bishop Nazir Ali's comments based on what you've just said about discrimination is based on theology or politics? I think there's probably a, it's a case of a, of a mixture of both. Um, obviously, when it comes to the theology, um, I don't uh, agree with him that uh, homosexuality is a sin. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we could spend the, the whole of this programme uh, de debating the, the texts in, in the Bible. It's, it's quite interesting that the small number of texts that talk about uh, same-sex uh, relationships and same-sex activity, as opposed to the number of texts uh, about uh, heterosexual sexual activity. Um, but at the same time, um, there, there is obviously the, the political element in it, in that we, we do have laws in, in this country that uh, give people uh, equality, and when you have somebody who is making comments uh, that, it, that, as far as I'm concerned, are encouraging people to, to go against those laws, then obviously that's also a political so, issue. So, I mean, in that sense, then, the law should, the secular law should, in your view, trump religion, re I mean, in, in a way, in, in principle, regardless of what, the, of what the law is. I mean, say it's a law, there's well, all sorts of laws you might not agree with, for example. That there may well be laws that uh, that, that I don't agree with. Uh, I'm, I'm sure sure there are. There, but that's based on on my own conscience and and my own belief. Um, and you know, we, every, people have beliefs, whether they're secular or whether they are religious, and and always have done. But then we have also had laws, and. You know, we're, we're all entitled to, to hold beliefs, but at the end of the day, we have to abide by the laws of the, of the country that right. we live in. So, and that's the same for, you know, I mean, again, to use the example of the BMP, they have beliefs, but they are not allowed to discriminate. Right. I mean, that's it, fine. So you're a law abiding. But I mean, in this instance, then you're a law abiding secularist. I mean, in, it, there's nothing you're saying that's religious at all, which is fine. Mm. I mean, I'm happy with that. What on earth is the point of religion in this then? I mean, is there at no point a role for religion to make a moral distinction, condemnation, and even, in some instances, to argue that something is wrong, evil, and so on, and speak out. Well, I think, you're, I think actually, if you, if you look, the, the, the majority of the laws that we have today have actually been based on the, on, on the scriptures. Um, you know, I mean, if you look at the, the Ten Commandments, most of our laws actually follow the, the, the Ten Commandments pretty, pretty closely. You know, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, etc., etc. So I, I think the majority of our laws are based um, on religion so and on religious laws beliefs. At the moment. That's all I'm trying to say. There's so many new laws come in. Is mm -hmm. the Bible going to be spending all of its time <clears> trying to <throat> keep up with, you know, smoking is a sin, using too much carbon is a sin? I mean, are you just going to be chasing after the secular law as a religious person to keep up? Um, well, I'm not personally, but I, I think there might be some people who would. David Long. There's, um, there's discrimination and there's discrimination, isn't there? I mean, you probably wouldn't want to have in your organisation people who advocated sexual relations with, say, vulnerable old people or with children. Absolutely so you, not. So you discriminate in that case. Isn't this just for a question of discriminating against those you don't like or opinions you don't share? 
No, it's uh, it's about the fact of, of consenting adults and about people being able to actually make those choices. Um, I think, uh, you know, sexual activity with elderly people who perhaps are, are not able to, to make that choice or, or with children or with animals or with, with, with whatever else, um, you know, uh, uh, yes, of course, I, I discriminate against but, that. But yeah. we're not talking about that. We're talking about uh, consensual relationships uh, between people who are able to give that but you consent. See, I think we are talking about it because those examples and one can think of many others, in fact, are drawn from a very solid body of Christian teaching on sexual ethics. Mm -hmm. It goes back two or three thousand years, which Bishop Nazir Ali is standing up for. So, I mean, what you're doing is you're discriminating within that body of sexual ethics some bits you like and some bits you don't like. I still don't understand what you're saying, well, the difference. <laughs> The, the the difference is about is about power and uh, within that relationship and again if you actually look at uh, the, the the teaching of, of Jesus in the Gospels um, he actually made it clear that relationships had to stop being about power relationships had been about power um, sexual relationships were always involving somebody who but had the power and somebody Bishop who Nazareth didn't. Bishop Nazareth is not suggesting relationships should be about power. No, he's, he's not. But what I'm saying is that in the Gospel, Jesus said that that is not the way that it should be. And that then opened up the, the ability to be actually distinguish between what are, are acceptable relationships and, and, and what are not. Before that, everything was very black and white. And, and the Old Testament was very clear about thou shalt not do this, thou shalt not do that, thou shalt not do the other. Um, and everything was excluded. And, and that was very clear. Then Jesus came along and, and said, well, actually, you know, it's not actually as clear cut as that. It's not as black and white as that and and we have to now actually use our own minds to actually work some of these things okay. out the other thing i'm not quite clear about is the link you make between someone like the bishop holding upholding this body of traditional sexual teaching and discrimination isn't he entitled to promote that body of teaching in any way he likes as noisily as he likes without you accusing him of discrimination he's entitled to uh, to hold his his opinion but I think we have to be very careful that when somebody does make uh, these statements, somebody who is in a position uh, like the bishop, uh, then that can actually incite other people to behave in a way that is that is hateful, that is discriminatory. And, and I think this is where we have to be careful. When somebody has the power, like like the bishop has, that, you you know, you have to be careful about what you say. It's very different from him making those statements and, and Joe Bloggs on the street making those statements. Ms. Ferguson, thank you very much indeed.